Hi guys, Exeter Rider, hope you're doing well. This week is my full review of the Royal Enfield Meteor 350. Now this is the Supernova version. Uh, there are also other versions, the cheaper value priced one, which is the Fireball, and also the Stellar. So this is the top of the range one uh, with a standard screen and a few other things as well. So uh, I have made a first video of this, so do check that out if you haven't done already yet. And uh, let's get on with the review. The Meteor on this type of road, pretty perfect really. Glorious, glorious to tip into the corners. Wonderful. Nice big wheels to get you over the bumps. Suspension, rear is harsh, even on this type of road. Over the uh, potholes and things like that, but oh, absolutely beautiful, guys. This is uh, this is exactly what motorbiking is all about. This type of bike on this type of road this time of year with this type of weather at this time of night it's actually coming up uh, eight o'clock at the moment and this, these are the moments when you feel like you're alive isn't it when you're on a bike as comfortable as this bike is and you're taking it all in going around the corners Total comfort, character for engine. Uh, you make makes you feel like you're part of the bike with this uh, engine here. It's absolutely beautiful. There's some of the other aspects of the bike as well. Seating position, it's lovely. I'll talk a bit more about it on the on the walk round, but uh, my feet are in a perfect place. Uh, kind of feet forward, but not too much. The mirrors have got a, a view over my elbow. Uh, gear lever and brake. Braking is fantastic on the back. That's one, one thing that Royal Enfield smash every time, is the braking. Really, really strong on the back. And in fact, I'd say that it's so good and strong that I actually use the rear brake on this bike more than what I do the front brake because it's just easy, it's just there. It's a comfortable way to stop. And uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic. Certainly makes a difference uh, being able to film this over, you know, sort of three weeks get to know the bike, not that I really need to know it that much, I knew within sort of an hour how I had to ride this bike and what I needed to do and uh, and I really, uh, yeah, as you can tell, I've really fallen for it for sure. <laughs> Beautiful, hope that comes through on camera, you know how nice this is. I feel very lucky to be doing this and while I'm at it, I don't want to, uh, I guess I should say thank you for watching as well this far so far absolutely appreciate you guys watching my videos which means that i can do rides like this and uh, bring you you know the videos that i can so thanks so much for that and uh, i guess at that point i should say if you're new to the channel give it a subscribe because hopefully i well i'm no that I'm going to have a bit more by coming up on uh, Royal Anfields this year. Right, so that was that lovely ride. Now, I'll take you into town and show you what it's like. Right, so the Meteor's brilliant out on the open road, but what is it like in traffic? Now, bearing in mind that the bike is a cruiser style, it is actually very low, so the weight is very low. Just easy to uh, sort of flick around a little bit. With you being uh, on top there. 
Um, obviously with it being quite a, a low seat height visibility uh, above the car roofs is limited but there's still enough there it doesn't feel like a low down cruiser like what you might get from uh, Honda 500 Rebel for example that is very low uh, whereas this you still feel like you're on top of the traffic and you can be seen quite easily so and it will be a good commuter in the city as well I'd say and don't forget you're doing all of this you know in a very comfortable manner the way you sat on the bike which counts for a lot because you don't mind being sat there so much you know so long then in the traffic filtering and also we've got loads of low down grunt because the second gear is well matched to the J series engine that we have um, you can do most of this just leaving it in second gear right now hopefully you can see this now uh, now my next turn is a standard left hand turn 0.5 of a mile away and my destination is only 0.7 of a mile away so we got the arrow there and uh, again it's like a TFT screen anyway which is nice it's got colour uh, you really feel like again you're getting value for money with this bike when you get a little screen like that it looks lovely um, so we're going to go up to this 0.3 of a mile it should show us a little red line hopefully I know it's going to work it's just a bit awkward uh, riding in a sports like position there you go red arrow there look. it's telling me to do a left here and that's basically all you need to see guys uh, so again not fully intuitive but it does the job it lets you know where you need to go and my next turn uh, my final destination should I say is only 0.5 of a mile away so it's not something you you may not use a lot but it's nice to have it there when it's chucked in so cheaply anyway it's not like you're paying you know sort of uh, BMW nav 6 prices is it 600 pound on top you know for your 4200 pounds you're getting a really good uh, uh, you know navigation system I've heard that it doesn't uh, set up too well with Android I am Android and I haven't had any problems with it like I say you have to think about it a bit but um, apart from that now it's a brilliant brilliant little system that for the money that you pay for the bike hope that's handy So let's talk about lane exploring on the Meteor. As you would probably expect, it's actually a really pleasant bike to ride around the lanes. Just keep it in a high gear. Let the low end talk. Pull you through each corner. It's very stable. And uh, yeah, it's a pleasant way to get around. Nice sort of... Uh, a nice sort of chugging around sort of feeling that you get from going around the lanes and again even when you come to a hill like this I'm in fourth gear now but really comfortable if you're in no rush just open it up let the power catch up with itself very pleasant okay out onto the dual carriageway now now these are limited to about 71 miles an hour I believe so full throttle now 45 mile an hour 50 Laurie let us out there that's very nice of him and uh, yeah 60 miles an hour 65 now I have got this fly screen here luckily which is helping me a lot it's quite a noisy place to be at the moment and uh, even with that screen there you go there's 71 
How does it feel? Uh, a lot of wind on my legs because I'm quite open there. I got no power left because uh, I'm going the full whack at the moment in fifth gear. Vibrations is uh, surprisingly got quite a lot of vibrations coming through at the moment. Now we have to bear in mind that this bike is uh, sub sort of 2,000 miles. So I have heard from a friend of mine that they don't loosen up until about 2,000 or two and a half thousand miles. That's uh, economical rides on YouTube. He owns one of these and uh, yeah, he knows his stuff when it comes to the Meteor. Oh, hello, going up to 75 now. It's certainly a very comfortable place to be. Uh, now, bearing in mind that it is a beautiful summer's night at the moment. But yeah, vibrations is coming a bit through the pegs and uh, a bit through the handlebars as well. But it's actually quite a pleasant place to be, you know. Probably because it's such a comfortable uh, seating position. The seat itself is comfortable. And I'll be happy doing this for, you know, a little while to be honest with you. Although I'm pinned, I still seem to be making progress past other vehicles, so. But even if I took it down a bit, you know, and just took it down to sort of, I don't know, let's say 65, I think that's where it's happiest actually. Yeah, 65 miles an hour, taking in the scenery, loving life, getting in that Royal Enfield uh, state of zen. <laughs> I know I keep banging on about that, but it really is so nice. And uh, yeah, it's just a really comfortable, comfortable yet noisy place to be. So if you were doing this every day, um, again bearing in mind that it is very nice weather at the moment, if you're doing it every day, I think it would actually be uh, fine. Yeah, I don't really have an issue with it. Those vibrations have suddenly got better. Probably needed a bit of a thrashing. Um, it's still running in this bike really anyway, it's only, I think it's done about 700 miles now. Uh, fuel economy is amazing, uh, even on the dual carriageway I'd imagine. Uh, I've done about, I don't know, 50, 60 miles uh, and I've only lost one bar on the fuel gauge. So uh, yeah, incredibly good for, for that. Uh, but again, it's an enjoyable place to be, <laughs> even doing this monotonous stuff. It's actually really nice. In many ways, you've got to look at it like this. The speed limit is 70 miles an hour. This will do 70 miles an hour all day. No problem at all. You've got to ask yourself, why do you really need any more? Right, that's that segment done. So on to the next and I think we'll uh, do the walk around now. Well then guys, so this is the walk around. So let me take you straight on with it first and show you what it's like to be sat on the bike. So I've got, I'm five foot eight. I've got a 30 inch inside leg measurement. And when I put my feet up there, it's really in a comfortable place like an armchair and the brake is very easy to reach. I can put my feet down flat and I've got a bend in the knee. No worries there. If you're a tall person this is going to be fine and if you're shorter as well then again you're going to be fine it's very easy to pull off the stand as well um, styling we've got loads of nice tweaks royal enfield tweaks all the way around and stamps on the foot pegs and uh, where else on the side there on the dash you know the whole lot looks really really sweet really nice plastic mud guards here which uh, do the job fine and uh, I prefer plastic myself because then it means it's not going to rust so that's probably definitely a good thing. Break-in is provided by Bybre. Uh, it's ex exceptionally good on the back and very good on the front as well. Um, one thing I do want to mention is that when I'm sat here um, on a longer trip I do feel like I'm reaching for the bars it tends to got that it's got that way of pulling you forward a bit 
So I think maybe some bar risers just to shove it back a little bit would be beneficial for me personally. 19 inch wheel on the front and a 18 on the rear. Uh, work really nicely. It works well in tandem with the rest of the bike and the wheelbase and the rake on the tire. It all, all works really, really quite well. Seat tires. Uh, I've only ridden it in the dry so far. Uh, I've ridden other bikes with Seat tires on in the wet and they've been okay. They're not, you know, they don't give me a huge amount of confidence, but um, I rarely hear anyone saying that they've got a, an issue with them in the wet. So that remains to be seen really. The one thing I don't like is the shocks here, uh, the way that they are, where you sit on the seat. Uh, when you do go over a big bump or a dip in the road, then it goes all the way up and goes right up through the back of your back of your spine there which is not very nice that's the only thing which i don't like about this bike um, that could be easily fixed i'm hoping with an aftermarket shock perhaps that would be nice uh, if they do do something switch gear we on the right bar we have the uh, start button there integrated with the kill switch hazards and then over here we have the pass light the info button here it's just to uh, take you through the trips and all the rest of it. Uh, indicators left and right and the horn down the bottom. So when you turn the ignition on, calibrates like so. And then we've got the fuel bar here, mileage, trips, gear position indicator as well, and the time. Quite small, uh, but yeah, it works. It's definitely a bike which I've had in the garage, which I've had to go out every now and then and look at because I've enjoyed it that much. I just want to see it and look at it. It's a beautiful looking bike. You know, whether it's this lovely chrome exhaust here, nice and chunky up to the big head. There, single cylinder thumper, loads of low down torque, which is uh, uh, what makes this bike so beautiful to ride for me. Uh, powder coated nicely as well. All the paint finish is, is really nicely done. Uh, I mean, for the money, for, you know, for a price that you can, frankly, you can buy a 125 for the money that you pay for this. So why would you if you had an A2 license or a full license? Um, loads and loads of uh, value for money you get out of these. Pillion riding, nice thick seat here, quite narrow. Uh, we've also got the back rest on this one as well. Don't take my word for it. Let's go over to my son now and he'll let us know what it's like riding pillion on the Roy Wenfield Meteor 350. Hi then, this is my son Toby. Um, he's gonna tell us what it's like riding pillion. But before he does, I just wanna let you know my side of things at the moment. So uh, riding with Toby on, I'm, I'm still finding the bike really stable and uh, chassis holds in quite nicely. Power-wise, there's a slight dip, but not as much as you might think, uh, because again, you've got all that power down low, and um, yeah, braking is still excellent as well, certainly on the back, it still holds in really well. Um, Toby, thanks for doing this. This is like take six for us now, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, doing this. five years. Oh, what a nightmare, mate. Battery problems and all sorts of techie problems. Um, what's it like for you on the back, please? As a back as a pillion rider, it's actually really nice. Uh, the seat size is really good. Um, not as big as some bikes, but nothing to worry about. The higher rev range of the bike, there's a few vibrations, but nothing to worry about either. Lower revs completely and utterly fine. Um, seat wise, it's got a lot of padding, so really, really comfortable. And it also has a back sort of some structural support for your back, which is really nice. Back rest, yeah. That's the one. That's good for your confidence, isn't it, on the yeah, back there? Yeah, definitely. As, especially if you're a new pillion rider and you're worried about falling off, then, you know, it, it's pretty much impossible to, to be honest. Yeah, I think it's quite surprising how many people, and your mum's the same, that, that, that say that they want a, a back box or something just to hold them in a bit. Yeah. And this one does that, doesn't it? Yeah, it does very well, actually. Um, and you like this bike, generally speaking, don't you? you? I mean, you're into your sports bikes, aren't you? You want to say one, yeah. two, five. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you do quite like this, don't you? Yeah, I really do. I really like the look of it. Always liked Royal Enfields, to be honest. So I could be biased. And the meaty sound of the long piston. Love it. Yeah, Sounds long amazing. stroke engine. Yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Loads of usable power and all that. It's brilliant. Yeah. Um, thanks very much, Toby. I know that I've, I've dragged you out, so appreciate it. Thanks for doing that, all right? Yeah, of course. Okay, riding the bike round slowly see what that's like 
Right, the lock on it is not bad for slow speed riding. The weight is obviously quite low down because it's a cruiser style anyway. Um, you can literally take it down to walk in pace and still keep it upright. Uh, left hand turns as well. You know, this is without dragging the rear brake, I might add. Yeah, it's really very light indeed. For a 350, I should say. So, slowing it right down again. You can almost go to dead stop. Ah, he says. Bit of drag on the rear brake there. Right, so that's all well and good, but another important point is what it's like pushing it around in and out the garage. Select neutral, oops, like so. We do have a decent grab handle here, which is the important thing. So pushing it around back and back into the garage. It's one of those bikes that's light enough if you just want to do a trip to the shops, then it's not too much of a struggle to pull out the garage and just go. It's not too much of a hassle. So it's quite good as a hop around town or pop into town and get the shopping sort of bike as well. The clutch and brake is very easy to reach, nice and chunky as well. Uh, gives you that good feeling of quality and also uh, just makes it nicer to ride when you've got a nice big chunky levers there. Uh, everything's very smooth, the throttle's light, the clutch is light as well. It's just a dream really to, 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 to ride this, I, I'm finding. Also you get the whole Royal Enfield um, club as well, once you get into the club. Uh, there's lots of clubs around the UK which you can join. I've recently uh, popped out with a, a group of friends all with Royal Enfields and had a great time uh, riding with them across Dartmoor. Uh, I've been done lots of mileage on this bike, I've probably done 300 miles already and I've still got it for quite a while yet. So. Uh, never boring, never boring. Uh, I've really enjoyed uh, riding every mile on this bike. Very relaxing type of ride, uh, beautiful low end torque uh, that you can use and you know really pulls you through really nicely. Go in fast gear, knock it straight in the second and just let the torque uh, pull you through. So that's it, I just want to say thank you very much to Warrior Wanfield. They've been really helpful and let me have the bike for a decent amount of time to get the shots in and do the things that I need to do. So thanks very, very, very much to them. And uh, I'll be doing more with Royal Enfield throughout this year. So uh, keep an eye on it. Um, thanks for getting this far in the video. I definitely really appreciate you having you here and uh, it's what keeps the channel running. So uh, the only thing I would ask is if you give it a like it would mean a huge amount to me. Uh, just like the video now and, I, and that'll be a big help. And subscribe if you haven't done already and hit the bell, of course, so you don't miss anything. I have got more coming up on the uh, Meteor 350, so keep an eye out for it.